Hello, everyone, and welcome, and thank you for tuning in to Health Leaders, the place for peer-sourced and solution-focused insights for healthcare executives. My name is G. Hatfield, and I'm the nursing editor for Health Leaders. Today, we are speaking with Cynthia Latney, who is the Senior Vice President and Chief Nursing Executive at Ohio Health, about the new Pickerington Methodist Hospital and its smart room technology. So hi, Cynthia. How are you? Hi. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thanks for joining me. Um, So let's jump right in. What is Ohio Health School for launching the new Pickerington Methodist Hospital? Yes, we're super excited. Pickerington is our new hospital that came online in December of 2023. Um, It's an 86-bed comprehensive hospital. And really our journey going into designing this new hospital is really to create a different experience for our patients and their families. What we do know is that our patients are looking for safety. They're looking for connection with their caregivers and their providers. And surely the consumers are really looking for that that experience, right? What's the value of what they're getting in their healthcare? And so we set out to say, What's going to be different for the future? We knew that technology technology was continuing to grow. Uh, We know AI AI is coming into place. So it's like coming out of the pandemic, we saw the benefits of using technology to help support our caregivers. And we saw the benefits of keeping our patients safe. Um, And so I have done some virtual nursing care models 10 years ago. So I was super excited to have this opportunity to bring that to Ohio Health. So the technology today really is that state of the art to bring the, the technology and the patient and the families together. Absolutely. So speaking of technology, what kinds of technology are being employed? Yes. So it's virtual, it's called a virtual care model. So it's the smart room technology where you have, you have a big screen in front of the patient's room and you have a camera. And part of it is that we wanted to have an interactive um, where the patients can have uh, just their just in time technology where they can get and play with the interacting with the TV, but it can also we have a nurse called a virtual nurse that's on the other side. And so part of it is using the tablet so they can interact to see where, who's on their care team. Um, How do they speak to, you know, asking for a request from the care team outside the room, um, asking for the pharmacist, or even asking for the meal trays. And it also interacts where their families can come into the room without even coming to the hospital, which was really needed if you're talking about um, someone who's had a new baby and you have a large family, you want to give the mom and dad their privacy, uh, but they want to see the new baby. And so now we have this opportunity that we're using the technology so the whole family can come meet the baby virtually and give the privacy uh, to the mom and the dad. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, so what what kind of role do uh, the nurses play? Are all of them virtual or are there still bedside nurses? Yes. So if you look at the virtual care model, there's two aspects. Well, three. You have your primary nurse that's there that is the, that sees the patient hands-on that's responsible for the care. Um, You have your PCA um, that's part of the team. You have the provider. And the virtual nurse really sits in between. It sits in between the technology and looking at the medical record and the care team that is right on um, seeing the patient directly. So some of the tasks... um, that the virtual nurse is doing is tasks that we know that a primary nurse can delegate to. For example, um, doing a shift report and supporting the nurse, um, admissions and discharge, care coordinating, 
uh, reviewing the record to see if there has been any misdocumentation. Uh, we also have the nurse helping to support new nurses. So when you have a new nurse that comes into the room and they need support, then you have the nurse that pops in that can be there in the background to help support them. Or they can be the second eyes for a nurse who needs a double check. Or it's like, oh, you know, I need um, help with um, understanding what's in the record so we can develop patient care and a plan. So that nurse is there 24 seven, no matter what. We do understand that today when our nurses are thinking about leaving the bedside, it is about their environment and all the things they have to do. And so the virtual nurse could be that person that reduces their anxiety, makes their environment um, enough where they can create, they can reduce that burden and be there for the patient. Because that's what we want to do. As nurses, we want to be there for our patients and our families and not spending a lot of time that's on the phone or in the medical record, but really be able to function and practice at the top of their license. That's what I want to do for my team. Absolutely. So what has been the nurse and patient reaction to the new smart room technology? It's, it's really interesting because we, um, we just produced a video to show the interaction. And I was just moved to see how this technology um, was really um, valued by the nurses themselves. So they talk about that there's always somebody there when I need them. And, and again, those admissions and discharges and checking through the medical record and, and pulling information, um, they're like, you know, I do that on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's so helpful when there's somebody there that can do that for me, that I can call and say, can you call into room so-and-so and go check on them? Because they can go round on patients for them. On the patient side, um, what the gentleman, the patient was saying is like having somebody there that I can call at any point in time. They understand the importance of having a primary care, a primary nurse with them, but when they need to reinforce information or they have a question, they, they really think about their nurses and who they're pulling away from, right? And so now they said, I can push that button at any point in time. And there's a nurse that comes on the screen with her beautiful smile or his smile. And um, I can ask him a question. And so that's what I want. We also hear it from our nursing students. So our nursing students come into Pickerton Methodist Hospital and they're like, I just feel so good that I have somebody that's with me. And they can't wait to graduate to come join the team because they're like, you know, the fear of starting a new practice as a new nurse and going in the room and wanting to have support and you have to wait for your preceptor or the primary nurse and just to know that you can just push a button and there's an experienced nurse on the other end. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like the benefit all around is just more support for everybody. And that's that's fantastic to hear. Um, so have there been any significant roadblocks that um, you've had to overcome? Yeah, well, change is hard. You know, any new change in any care model where we're asking our care teams to do a process that's different, um, having a third person, part of the team. Um, and, you know, experienced nurses like myself, you know, you can get kind of protective of your assignment and your patient. And it's like, what do you mean somebody else is going to, you know, chime in? And so we had to do a lot of um, building of trust in our relationship and understanding what the roles are and who's responsible for what and accountable for what. And I think once you do that, and it, it was helpful when we start a new hospital, right? Everybody knows that's how the team is going to function in the processes. It makes it much easier than when you're going into an existing care unit to say, now I have to relearn adding another team member. 
So we're now looking at um, the hospital has been open since December of 2023. Uh, we're reevaluating, looking at a six months kind of check in. Uh, we've seen good increases in our outcomes for improvement. Um, service scores are, are better. Our quality scores look good. But again, it's a new service, right? It's a new hospital. So we're going to need time to really evaluate the impact of this new model. But at the same time, we understand this is a model for the future. These work environments are tough. Our patients are more complex. Um, our patients, you know, they come with um, different modalities for our new nurses. 60% of our nurses here are less than five years experience. That means wow. we need to have that support at mm -hmm. the bedside. Absolutely. So what are some of the positive outcomes that you've seen so far? One is our satisfaction. Our associates mm -hmm. are appreciative that we're thinking about them. Um, the model was designed as an interactive kind of approach. What we asked our front lines to design this model uh, with us. So there's nothing that came from the top down. Um, we knew that they needed support, um, but we wanted to make sure that we designed it based on their feedback and what they valued. Um, so associate satisfaction is one of the outcomes. Um, our service scores, our, our patients are, are satisfied. Although, you know, we, we don't have the opportunity to look back to see, to compare um, what we do know is that they're at the top quartile in their performance. So consistently, we expect that to, to, to continue moving forward. Um, we have had many um, good catches. So in our high reliability organization program, um, there have been a number of patient safety saves that um, this new care model had provided. So that's a benefit of the organization is the benefit of the patient that we are not, you know, adding any risk to the, to the organization and we're preventing any potential risk um, to our patients. Gotcha. Very cool. So um, I guess the largest takeaway uh, from this is what can, what do you think other health systems can learn from, um, from Ohio health's model? You know, I think that it's, they can learn that one, trust in innovation in their teams, listen to the teams. Um, there's been a lot of models out there. And of course, you know, Ohio Health is, you know, it's 86 beds and there's other organizations out there that are doing larger scale virtual care models. Um, but I think we're unique in how we're approaching our model and, and using the team effectiveness approach to the model. Um, that I think is going to be sustainable. Um, so I say, give it a try. Um, it, it is a benefit to reducing the, the burden that our staffs are seeing in this environment. Um, and why not have another set of eyes to help provide that safety for our patients and our families? Um, the technology, you do have to plan. You know, the technology changes uh, probably, you know, every week there's a new type of technology. Um, but I think it's worth it. I think at the, at the end, with us creating a safer environment for not only our patients and families, but our associates, mm -hmm. that means a lot and it's worth it. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Cynthia, for your time. I'm really grateful to have had this opportunity to hear your insights and thank you so much to our audience for listening. Well, thank you for having me.